Hi, I'm Benjamin Perro from Exo. Uh, I'm a product manager at Exo Platform. And today I will give you uh, a quick overview of uh, the company Exo and uh, the product we, we have. So uh, a little bit about uh, the agenda of this webinar. It will be a general presentation of the, the product. So we'll start with a 15 minutes on who we are and what is Exo Platform for. Uh, then I will go into a, a brief presentation of the platform features with a, a demo of 20 minutes or so. And then we will keep, we will keep time on the questions and answers for 15 minutes. Uh, so as it's a webinar, uh, I won't be able to answer during the presentation and the demo. So if you have questions, please keep them for the Q&A session. Okay, so who we are at the platform. Some quick facts about the company. Uh, EXO was funded in 2003 and uh, ventured back in 2010. So to, uh, this year we are celebrating the 10 years anniversary of EXO platform. And we have now headquarters in San Francisco in US and as well as in France uh, for the global headquarters. Uh, important uh, facts, we were listed in 2012 in the Gartner's Magic Radon for the horizontal portals of rain. Uh, Quick facts about uh, our topping as well. We have um, veterans from JBoss, Red Hat, so we can get this expertise from their experience in these companies, in these large companies. Um, about the competencies of EXO, uh, we have a long Java history. Uh, we implemented the first bootlet specifications uh, a long way back in 2002. It was the GSR 168 specifications, and it led to the first customer, the US Department of Defense. So this is the origin of the creation of a company, actually. Um, and we believe of an open source and standards. So you will hear today a lot about standards. Uh, we believe in standards, so we rely on, uh, just to name some of them, CMIS, GCR, portlets, open source for, etc. So I won't name every one of them, but for us, it's very important. Um, I, and we think that for customers as well, in, in terms of uh, reliability and uh, parity of a product. And of course, it's an open source product. And uh, to finish this uh, quick facts on the company, uh, we did a spin off uh, last year at the, at, at the beginning of 2013, actually, uh, with a new company named CodeNV. So, all the activity about uh, the EXO environment for development, the web based ID, is now an independent company. And I will maybe talk a little bit about that uh, later in the presentation. So what is Exo Platform? Exo Platform is a, an open source social collaboration software, and it has been designed for enterprises. Um, so there's a lot of keywords, so I will just explain some of them. Uh, open source, we know what it is. Uh, we believe in the social collaboration for the enterprise. Uh, for us, social is uh, one part of a product. It's an important one. It's a key feature, a core feature. Uh, but it's more here to help to improve the collaboration in the company rather than to provide a social uh, social only enterprise platform. Uh, we want social to help and to improve the collaboration in the company. And I will explain that about how we can do that with the, with the product. And um, just to explain a little bit about how it is uh, featured and what are the extensibility of a the platform, uh, there's actually two sides of a platform. On one hand, it's a ready-to-use platform, which comes with a, an internet experience, ready-to-use uh, features out of the box. And uh, people say that we also have an amazing design. So that's uh, what people say. Um, but on the other hand, it's also extensible. Uh, we want it to be very easy to use for end users. We, we believe in design and user experience, but we also believe in extensibility. So that's for developers and partners, so and also for clients. So you can extend it, and more than that, you can even integrate it in your existing infrastructure and with your existing uh, applications. So that's uh, what defines, I think, Exo Platform. So a quick word about social because it's very important uh, today. It's everywhere. So yes, we we have a social part of the platform, but like I said. Uh, for us, it's more a way to improve a collaboration rather than just to provide a social platform. And so that's, I think, what we did with the platform. Uh, it's an enterprise-ready social uh, product. 
and software. And uh, we will see that maybe with the pricing, uh, we think that we have a very affordable uh, enterprise platform today with Exo Platform 4. So the technology we use and what we want to provide is an all-in-one single platform. So in this platform, you will, we want to provide everything from the portal management to document management, collaboration with uh, forums, wikis, knowledge management and uh, collaboration with calendars. Uh, you can also build private clouds with very advanced features in multi-tenancy and elasticity. And um, we also believe in mobile. So you, we have uh, native applications on different handsets uh, like uh, the iPad and Android and iPhones. Uh, so it's also part of this global user experience for the all-in-one uh, Seagull platform. So just to, to present some of the, the features we have, uh, first with the social features, it's more like a core features of a product because uh, uh, all the other features will access to the uh, user profiles or use the connections of the activity stream to share activities. Uh, we have also, of course, collaborative features where you can organize the work uh, by teams uh, in the spaces. I will explain that during the demo, so I won't give uh, everything now. Uh, we also have wikis, forums, etc. And content features, it's another very important uh, part of the platform. We have a strong document management features where you can share your documents, you can manage a lot of documents uh, by teams, you can manage permissions, etc. And um, as part of a product, as I said, it comes with a ready to use intranet but you can also build websites using the portal features. So you can build an extranet, or you can even build your main website using the solution. And because everything is stored in the platform and everything is available in this all-in-one platform, uh, we have a unified search, so you can search on anything in the platform. Exo Platform 4 comes also with productivity features, such as dashboard, for users, so you can build your own, your, your own dashboards. Uh, also with calendars and tasks, so you can share calendars or import calendars, for example, remote calendars from Google Calendar, uh, just to take one example. As I said, uh, the second part, uh, second side of the platform is uh, extensibility. Uh, it relies on the application containers and we provide uh, a lot of Java APIs and REST APIs so you can leverage our own services and extend the platform. Like you can extend the activity stream or you can extend the document management. And as an add-on, we also have a web-based ID. And that's the famous spin-off with uh, the Condon V company. And um, it's embedded inside the platform. So directly from within the platform, from within the, the browser, you can develop a new application uh, using a gadget or even do some mashup uh, using REST services. And of course, uh, it comes with uh, an enterprise portal. Uh, it's uh, one of the core features of the platform. Uh, it's um, the productization of uh, the, the open source project named Gaitin, co-developed by Exo Platform and uh, Red Hat JBoss teams. So we co-developed this, uh, this um, portal together and what we do in Exo in the enterprise solution and software is we, we provide a nice UI composer and a great user experience uh, on these core portal features. So that's the integration we want and we did uh, in the Exo platform for, for the portal features. And of course, as it comes with the enterprise editions, uh, we have strong integration features uh, such as in, uh, enterprise directory, you can also connect your existing uh, SSO, single sign-on. And again, it is based on standards uh, for almost everything we do. Uh, so it's, again, very important for us. As I said at the very beginning, we did a, a spin-off with uh, the company named Code Envy for the, uh, uh, the, multi the, uh, the web-based ID, sorry. And um, actually, just to, uh, why I talk about that is, uh, because here we're talking about multi-tenancy and the elasticity, and we spend a lot of energy in the last years on the this area. And um, if you if you take Code Envy, which is using the uh, multi-tenancy exo technology behind it, 
Uh, they have something like 60,000 or 70,000 tenants in the cloud today. So uh, that's uh, our best proof in production. Uh, we have a lot of tenants uh, with, uh, with uh, Code Envy uh, already uh, used in production. And it's also available for the platform by itself. So you can create if you want, uh, but it will be very specific. Uh, so you can ask for another uh, demo or a meeting for that with our sales team. Uh, you can build even a, a private cloud if you have this specific need. I'm more talking to partners here. Uh, as I said, we have mobile application. So if, if you're on the go, you still have an access to your activities and your teams. So you're never disconnected from the internet. And uh, for example, you're a manager, you're at a meeting, you just have access to your mobile. You can still follow what's going on in the company on your mobile. And you have dynamic notifications and you can even consult and uh, follow your documents in the document management. Um, a little bit uh, discussion about partners and customers. I start with the uh, bank and insurance. Of course, we have customers in the bank and insurance sector. Uh, I pre generally at HSBC just to name some of them. Um, just to take one example, the Caixa Bank, it's uh, one of the largest um, clients we have. It's the second bank in Brazil. They have, I think, more than 10 projects already in production. It's, it's, these are middleware projects, portals, extranets, websites, uh, intranets as well. Uh, they have, uh, I, uh, as I remember, 15 million sophisticated users in the database and 15,000 contributors using the platform every day. We also have customers, of course, in the government sectors. Uh, like at NATO, the Department of Defense, the Ministry of Finance in France and Belgium. Uh, again, just to take one, uh, NATO, they took EXO. One of the reasons they took EXO was uh, because of the security we have in the product and the standards we believe in. And just to finish the private sector, so we have different uh, kind of customers here, uh, like M6, which is a French TV channel, or EADS Orange, uh, every, everyone knows about a range. Uh, just to take again one of them, I will take Red Hat. Uh, the uh, official website of Red Hat, redhat.com, is uh, developed and uh, with the Exo technology. And uh, it's translated in 27 languages using the multi language technology we provide with the uh, Exo platform. So, of course, we are an editor, so we won't do the project from the development to the production. We, for that, we rely on partners, technical partners, and value-added partners. Uh, we have partners all around the world, uh, in US, um, in Africa, in South America, with uh, for Linux, in Europe, of course, uh, with Zaji in Asia. So um, if you're a client, uh, you can uh, ask us for a partner, and we can redirect you to the right partner in your uh, geographical area. Or if you're a partner, uh, you can ask us to become a partner and, uh, and we have project and we can work together, I think. And uh, to finish this uh, tour of uh, partnership and uh, clients, uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, technological partners and OEM partners. Um, of, of course, the first one is DeBoss because we co-develop the Portal Foundation together. Uh, we also have a strong re relationship with uh, other companies such as Bonita Soft or business processes. So you can integrate the entire Bonita user experience directly inside Exo platform. Uh, we also have an integration with Sugar CRM for CRM, with JasperSoft or uh, Convertigo for mashups, just to name these, these. So as I said, we are an open source company. So our business model is based on subscription and we have three different editions of the platform. The open source one, the community edition, I will start from the, the end of, of the slide. So it's, uh, it is limited in terms of uh, platform. So it's more for an evaluation purpose, uh, but of course it's free and open source. Uh, we also have an express edition. Uh, it's this platform, this edition is, um, is perfect for small and medium companies. So you want to start fast, you take the out of the box solution, you have other boss express edition and you can install and run your social collaboration intranet and uh, last is the enterprise edition uh, that's the one uh, with support and that's the one which comes with uh, productions and highly extensible uh, features 
and as well as enterprise class features such as the uh, enterprise integration in your infrastructure like I, as i said clustering sso active directory etc just to name just to give some examples so a quick comparison between these uh, three different editions the social intranet uh, available on all of them, of course, website only of enterprise. And then in terms of maintenance, the support is uh, exclusive to the enterprise edition. Uh, we have a community support for the express edition, but no professional support. And uh, of course, the community edition comes with a LGPL license. So it's uh, an open source. For the express edition, the pricing is quite simple. It starts, it starts with a, a 25 users plan, uh, for dollar per user per month, and it goes up to 500 users plan. And the price, as you can see, it's like the price of an espresso per user per month. And as per, per the enterprise edition, uh, like I said, uh, the, most of the features you get with the enterprise edition is mostly uh, the enterprise integration, the scalability and the high availability of a platform of course, the development environment and the professional support. So this is exclusive to the enterprise edition. For the pricing, uh, I won't, it's, it depends of different aspects of uh, the usage you will have with the platform. So if you have a question regarding to the enterprise edition, you can contact us, you can contact uh, the sales team and they will be glad to organize another meeting uh, to discuss about that. Of course, we are an editor, but we can provide services. As I said, we work with partners, but we can help partners and we can help customers either to start a project with a, a kickstart program, or we can train you, we can, we can train your teams, either admins for customers or developers and architects for our partners, and we provide certification. And we also have a consulting team, so they can help partners on proof of concepts, but also you, we can develop custom solutions if it's needed and we can help you with our expertise on migration, for example. So that's, uh, that ends up this uh, quick tour. I will switch now to, the, um, to a demo. I'll give you just a, a quick demo of the platform. So when you want to, uh, to test, if you want to test the platform after this webinar, uh, you can go on this uh, website, exoplatform.com. Uh, it's very simple. You will get a link here, try it online. So you click here, you can send your first name and last name, etc. And then you can try it online. Or uh, if you want, you can download it. That's the one I've got on my laptop right now for the demo. And uh, it's just a zip, a zip uh, file. You can unzip it and then you can start it from there. It's uh, well explained in the, uh, in the package. So I will show you the platform now i will go into my laptop so i'm it's locally uh, that's the login screen we have so uh, i can enter my credentials so i will set, say benjamin and my password and i will log in, in the platform and i arrive in the welcome page uh, of intranet and what you have in front of you here is uh, what you get out of the box uh, there's no customization except for the, the chat extension that you have here, and I will come to that later. But besides that, it's only just contents I created in the platform using what is available out of the box. So uh, what is it about? We have on the left access to your application. So it comes with uh, the built-in applications, the wiki, uh, the documents management, where you can share your documents. Uh, it comes with nice drag and drop features, so you can drag and drop very easily documents in the document section. Of course, we have forums, calendars. Uh, then you can, I don't have a full uh, extranet or website, but you can push the news of a company here, or even if you have your page, you can customize that. Here it's just an example of the company blog integrated in the internet and a list of news. And as I said, the chat here, uh, it's an extension. It's a free add-on We can uh, you can put in the platform. And uh, it's just to, to show you uh, what you can what you can do as a partner, how you can extend the platform. So uh, these are the built-in application, but you can also integrate your own application. In this case, the chat, uh, but you can also integrate another application you can develop or you have today in your in your infrastructure. And below we have 
the spaces management uh, and all of the spaces you are member in. So you can build different spaces, different kind of spaces. I've got a few of them here. Uh, you can build private spaces like bank projects or project management. In this case, maybe you can invite people and they can accept or refuse your invitation. So it's validation based. Uh, if you, you can also build uh, spaces for uh, based on the organization of a company like human resources or marketings. And in this case, you may choose directly the group in the user directory. So if it's uh, an Axis directory or open LDAP, you just choose the group and all the people, all the individual people from this group would be attached to the space. And uh, the last case is uh, if you want to create more like a, a community space, like anybody can join it. So nice example is the public discussions. You want a place in the intranet where anybody can interact and discuss together and share things in the intranet. And of course, you can join them from there. And I will, I will go into the spaces a little bit later. So I will just keep that uh, on the side for now, and I will come back to uh, the spaces later. Um, just to finish this quick tour on the uh, home page, uh, of course, we have a microblog and activity stream. So as I said, uh, the social part is a key element of the platform. So as social, I say that you can share your, uh, your feeling in the internet, like I can say that Maybe I'm with, I will, okay, I will say that I'm with Mary, for example, and we are at Paris, uh, okay, taking a coffee. Okay, that's pure, okay, socialization inside the company. So I can share that. Uh, but as I said, uh, the way we see social is more to improve the collaboration. So when you go over each name here, even if you're not, not connected to someone, you will see the overlay pop up when you, when you can connect to people. Like here, I received, a message in the public discussion for someone from John. I'm not connected with John, but you can see I can, if I'm very interesting by the idea he proposed or by its comments, by his comments, uh, I can connect with him. So this way you can discover new people, you can connect with new people. And if I continue on the right, again, to extend your network, to discover new people in the company, uh, we push to you the invitation, people who want to be connected with you, uh, but also we push suggestions based on your existing network. So like John or Space, if uh, John is already connected with multiple uh, connections in your network, maybe it makes sense for you two to connect with him. Same thing for Spaces. So it's more like the way we see uh, the social inside, inside the platform. Um, just to finish on this uh, homepage, uh, a quick word about the activity stream. As you can see, it's uh, based on activities. It's not just a feed of a social feed of the, the company. It's uh, more or less uh, activities based on uh, and extensible once more time. Uh, so it's uh, based on the open social specification from Google and you can extend it. So for partners, we provide APIs. So can, you can create your own activity types and your own web views. Like here, you have this activity for polls and this nice web view directly. Uh, inside the uh, activity. And of course, uh, you can vote, you can like, you can comment on the, these activities. It will be the same thing for everything we have uh, in the platform, all the built-in applications, like for documents, you have this nice preview for Excel files or PowerPoints or Word documents, OpenOffice, LibreOffice documents. Uh, same thing for the wiki, we see, we show the last modification, we can show, we can add a comment, when the page has, has been moved. So, so this way you can follow what is going on in the company and it will be the same thing for uh, PowerPoint, for forums, etc. like everything in the platform. And again, it's text and symbol, so you can create your own activity types. For example, if you have uh, an existing CRM and you want to push an activity from the CRM when you modify something to the activity stream, uh, it's, uh, it has been done with Sugash CRM and you can do it with your own CRM as well. And just to finish this quick tour, uh, because everything is stored in the platform, um, we can also search on anything from anywhere. So we have for that the unified search, and you can just typing, start typing a name, something, and we will search on the files. Even inside the files, we indexed all the files, like a PDF, Microsoft Office documents, etc., uh, but also wikis, people, spaces, forums, agendas, etc. 
And again, uh, we have uh, plugins for this uh, unified search. So if you want to integrate another content type, uh, one, one of your own existing applications, you can plug in your own uh, application here. Uh, it's just using REST services in this case. So it's just a quick word for potential partners in this uh, webinar. Uh, before I was talking about uh, spaces, so I will just um, show you how it works very quickly. So I will go into a, a project space. So the bank project, um, let's say that I'm a manager. I, I want to, uh, to, to, to keep a look on what's going on in this space. Uh, I want to check the next meeting with a customer. So here I can have what's going on. I can see that we published uh, the last uh, RFP on the, on the project. We have a new version on this RFP. Uh, I've got also uh, some documentation about the solution we want to, uh, to provide to the customer, in this case, uh, Exo Platform, and uh, some discussion and maybe some answers in the, du during uh, the, uh, the project meetings and discussions we have uh, every day. So like that, very easily, I can see uh, what is the new activity, what's, what we are doing today. Uh, but then I can go into each application, like I can go in the document section, I've got access to the documents and uh, I've got access to these documents because I'm part of the space. Uh, it's very important. Uh, two aspects that are very important inside EXO is uh, security and privacy. So if you create something inside the space, you have to be part of a space to see this. So it's private for the people from this space. And for us, it's very important. It will be the same thing for all the applications we, uh, we have in the product. Uh, same thing for the wikis. Uh, agendas, etc. So everything you create in the space is private to the space. So that means that if you go in the unified search, uh, if you're not part of the one space, you won't see the documents from this one. Uh, that being said, uh, it's also an enterprise platform. And also one thing, we're using the platform every day as well. And uh, we want things to be shared, shareable very easily. So just to take uh, the document management, uh, as I said, we can drag and drop uh, if I take a document, I'm on the Mac, but it's the same thing on Windows. I can take a document, upload it in the platform. So the file is uploading. We're generating the, the thumbnail. And then from there, I can manage the permissions and I can share this document. Um, it will be the same thing in the wiki. Thanks for, to the underlying layer, layer, we share the same permission model across all the applications. And that means that you will find the same mechanism on all the applications. And I will show it to you with uh, the wiki, but it's the same thing everywhere. So again, as you can see, the wiki page here in this case is restricted. But if I want to share it, I can either send a link and people who don't have access to the space will be notified and it will be possible for them to join the space if they want, if it's uh, an open space. Or uh, I can make it public in one click if I want to share it to everyone show it to the activity stream, for example. And also, you can even have more advanced uh, permissions, like if you want to share to the individual people or to anyone or to uh, groups in the user directory, you can see, uh, you can sh uh, check, sorry, <laughs> who can view the wiki page or edit the page. And it will be the same mechanism inside the document section, or et cetera. So that's uh, the way we see privacy inside the applications. And another word about uh, uh, the spaces, it's more for partners now. It's about the applications themselves. If we take, I will take a visual example, uh, this agenda here, uh, I can see that uh, I've got this, this agenda view. So I can see that uh, in terms of the bank project in the company, I have two meetings, one today and one tomorrow. Um, but now I will switch to uh, the same application, but using more general context. And now you can see that I found all my agendas. I have a new panel on the left. So at the end, what it is, it's the same application. It's just a question of context. So this is why I'm talking to partners, because in terms of features, it's not important. But in terms of development, you can create, develop one application. And based on the context, either if it's a general context, space one, or user one, uh, the, the application can have a different look. But in terms of development, it's only one application. So it's uh, also more efficient uh, to develop and to extend the platform. And I was talking about the user context. Uh, of course, each user has uh, an access to his own profile. So it can customize and 
set up his own current permit, uh, current position or experience. So that's part of the profiling in the in the social aspect of a platform. Uh, but you can also create your own dashboard, uh, customize it based on your work in the company, or create your own wiki pages for just your your notes stuff like that. So that's uh, for the quick tour uh, of the intranet. Um, I will switch now to have another user to show you more advanced features. So you can see here more, more or less the experience, the standard experience of a platform. Um, of course, there's many more features, but some, somewhere I have to stop. And I would just switch to another user. I will take another window. Okay, now I open another browser with John. So John is um, an administrator and a contributor. So it's two different roles here. So as an administrator, he has access to the administration panel. You can see that he can manage the users, applications, content management, content administration, portal management. He can define, change the pages, create new sites, and of course, monitor the platform. Um, but he's also a contributor. So from this menu, he can access all the contents deployed, um, created in the platform and um, also change the, uh, the page layout or the site layout. If it's a public website, you can change and edit the uh, SEO's metadata. It stands for search engine optimization. So it's uh, you set up metadata for search engine like Google, Yahoo, or Bing, just to take uh, some of them. And um, I was talking about contribution. So the way we see contribution is, uh, again, it's about user experience. So we want it to be very simple for the end user. So let's say, for example, that we need to push here an alert on the home page. So that's the current uh, content on this page, the current banner, but I can switch to the content edit mode. Um, I prepared already an alert. It's not published yet, but I already created a new content. It's an alert about uh, an upgrade, a maintenance upgrade. And uh, from this point, I can directly edit it or I can publish it from there. Or I can create a new alert if I want. Uh, to give you another example, I will go in the news page and you will see that the interface is the same. Uh, you can here directly here, double click and edit the content, or you can edit the content in the Content Explorer. If you want, for example, to uh, upload uh, a background, a new illustration. So you access here all the features and you can check the content, edit the content. And when, you, when you're done with the edition, uh, if you want to publish it, and you just go back to the context where you left. So you go back to the website. And again, because we want it to be very simple, very easy to use, you can create a new content from there. You can manage all the contents like unpublishing some contents from there. So that's uh, the user experience in terms of uh, content collaboration in the platform. I, I will finish this, uh, this quick tour with um, another example. I will switch to another site. So I will go at the top and I will open acme.com slash portal slash extranet. Because I talk about the intranet, but you can also customize the intranet or create even create uh, another website. Like here we have a very simple one. It's accessibility website. So it's it follows the RGAA accessibility rules by, by the uh, W3C. And you have this website where you have this navigation with all the contents. And again, you find here all the contents. And if I go on the platform differences, you can see uh, that now I can just, for example, double click, edit my content and change my content. I can say the platform integrated uh, solution software, for example. Okay, and I can save that. So I've got this draft version. I can publish it. Or if I switch to the live mode, I will come back to the uh, published version, the last published version. So this is the way uh, we see the, uh, the contribution inside a, a website or inside the internet. And you will see, even if you're in a website, you will find the same user experience as the one you can find inside a block inside the internet. So that's what I was talking about when I was talking about adding uh, user experience in the Portal Foundation and, uh, and, the nice, and a nice UI in the Portal uh, collaboration. That's uh, what we did here with uh, this uh, inline editing. So that ends up this uh, quick tour of the platform. Uh, of course, there's many more features. 
Uh, you can extend the platform. Uh, there's in terms of administration, you can manage the applications, uh, manage the content administration. Uh, you can monitor the platform. So that's more here for uh, administrators, the administrators of the platform. And um, most of these uh, services are based on services we support. And it's well documented in the, the documentation web website. Uh, you can find this website on docs.exoplatform.org. So um, that ends this uh, presentation, this global presentation of uh, the product. Uh, we can now switch to a uh, question and answers if you have some. So I will wait for question and answers. If you don't, we can stop here. Okay, so no question for today. So we will stop uh, this uh, webinar. Thank you for uh, attending this uh, webinar and uh, maybe see you in another meeting, in another demo for more questions if you have some. Thank you.